Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, depending on when you will see this recording. Um, it's my pleasure that, uh, to be invited to give you be, be a part of a lecture uh, given by Simples Foundation for University of Parma students. Uh, well that, today I will talk, tell you a little bit about uh, the field and the research field that's quite uh, close to me, as I work in the field where it is that we try to also tackle the field. It's digital twins. Uh, and how to use new technologies in order to innovate, test, and simulate uh, possible new advancements or check some things beforehand in a digital environment. Before delving into the topic and giving you some idea of what it is and how it relates to healthcare and such, I would like to first introduce myself. Who am I? Uh, I'm Taghi Adia, uh, originally from Azerbaijan. I am 28 years old. Uh, I, my educational background is mostly in artificial intelligence. I did both, both my bachelor's and master's in Netherlands. Uh, both of my studies focused on uh, AI and mostly in uh, machine learning. At this, I did my thesis both uh, in bachelor's and master's around machine learning, and in both cases, I did it in uh, machine learning applications in healthcare. So after my studies, I continued as a postgrad researcher in at the hospital in Maastricht, in, in Netherlands. Uh, focusing on the healthcare applications of artificial intelligence, where the limitations are, how can we overcome them, uh, what machine techniques we can use, or what statistical approaches to use given certain uh, limitations of the data sets or certain uh, challenges. On top of that, I have experience, uh, I've, I was doing research projects in uh, using AI in order to analyze satellite images automatically and developed AI systems for game development companies. Uh, medical informatics was given, and most recently I also worked in a company where I was focusing on the AI applications for anomaly detection and predictive maintenance. More, more on that a little bit later. Professional experience, shared a little bit with my education as I was doing studies and research and work on it together. So I was a researcher at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland for three years, where I focused on the AI applications for healthcare and for the satellite image analysis. Uh, afterwards, in the last two years, I was a data science at a Finnish company named Varsala, focused on ship engines and anomaly detection applications and predictive maintenance applications in this case. And most recently, less than a month ago actually, I started a new company which is one of the largest uh, e-retailers in Netherlands and in Belgium. Uh, on a more personal level, I'm a big basketball fan and fanatic. I love piano and I've been trying to learn it uh, throughout the pandemic. I do like gaming uh, in the evenings and whenever I have free time. And also I try to keep track and be engaged with the machine learning and artificial intelligence field as much as possible. So talks like today are actually quite uh, motivating for me to uh, get back into the group of things. On top of that, I am a chief technology officer and data protection officer in Samples Foundation. And that's actually one of the reasons also why I'm part of this lecture. So let's, let's get into it. What's a digital twin? Um, in the literature over the last 10 years or so, there have been many definitions of digital twin. One of the earlier ones was coming from the NASA, where they said digital twin is an integrated multi-physics, multi-scale, multi -scale, probabilistic simulation of a vehicle or system that uses the best available physical models, sensor of this field history to mirror the physical system. To... Um, this is a bit more complicated the definition of digital twin, to be honest. So more recent ones, for example, from the Chan in 2017, they say it's a computerized model of a physical device or system that represents all functional features. And even more recently, in 2019, uh, Mandy and the team defined digital twin as being a virtual sense of a physical system that continually updates itself with the performance, maintenance, any kind of health status data, and so on. As you can see, the concepts and the definition are usually around more industrial case or more uh, mechanical engines, let's say, mechanical systems. So yeah, they're, they're, they're mostly mechanical systems, but in reality, if you look at those, all those concepts and just think about what digital twin might mean, it's a very simple concept. We have a more a usually complex physical system, and we want to make a digital virtual version of it in order to be able to simulate things or test things or you know be able to find some faulty behavior maybe before time by running some cases and simulations are against it. 
Uh, and one of the main attractions of it is that when we talk about more let's say, industrial systems, for example, more ship engines or cargo ship engines or big electrical power plants, for example, in nuclear uh, areas where the engines are being used in some cases, to do tests on those kind of engines is quite expensive because engines themselves are quite expensive to develop. It's expensive to do tests, run tests on them. It requires a lot of uh, manual labor as well, and usually those engines are quite large. So having something like this is quite desirable because we can run things quite simple, in quite a simple way and actually maintain some, get some results. You might ask, isn't the same as simulations? Why do we have a different definition of this and such? They are similar. Digital twins and, simula and just simulation-based uh, models are similar, and actually simulations are a big part of the digital twin usually. The main one of the main differences also defined by IBM when they talk about digital twin is that it's a scale. It's the scale at which they operate. Digital twins usually mean there's multiple systems and multiple processes that talk to each other, and then they will communicate with each other, and there's an intrinsic, complicated uh, correlation between the systems. So you can see in a way that digital twins is multiple simulations. And digital twins in themselves, the Intel ritual ritual environment, where you can study multiple processes, how, how a certain change or process can actually create a ripple effect throughout the whole pipeline. So how how are they enabled, or actually, better, why are they enabled even, or why do we talk start talking about digital tools more recently? In reality, digital twins, or the idea of the simulations and such, is a, it's not a new concept. Uh, we have had rule-based or more mechanical twins for some time now. The main limitations there, of course, has been that this is based on uh, humans' knowledge of, about the systems, uh, so they, they didn't capture all the complex correlations. Uh, they were hard to maintain over time, as you had to add more and more rules once we had actually learned more about the system, and they were not as accurate. So the main Technologies are main things that actually allowed for digital twins to start becoming an interesting topic of discussion have been high throughput data, uh, advancements in AI, and hardware accelerations. So when we talk about high throughput data, so in the case of the engines and such, we talk about the cloud enabling us to get real time, real life data, and when we, and the, most of the companies also like we can also think about your cars for example the new cars the more new age cars they will come with very advanced dashboards very advanced uh, analytics and statistics and some sensor values basically coming from your engine from your car for example the oil pressure it can be uh, the some temperatures in your uh, valves for example or, and so on right? there's many different things so we we are getting very detailed, very high throughput data. And when we talk about when we think about healthcare, for example, we know that uh, we have in genomics we have uh, high throughput sequencing data. Uh, we have been many other subfields within the medicine have also been generating more and more data. On top of that, you might have heard, and well, it's quite a common thing that the AI has also has advanced, especially uh, machine learning part, uh, deep learning boom of the last 10, 15 years has actually enabled us to work with the very complex systems. They have some down, uh, pitfalls, of course, in a sense that they're usual black box models, which means we do not always can easily understand or debug or basically explain why certain things are happening within the system. But with a good understanding of how the system has been built, we can reason about them. So it adds level of complexity, let's say, even though it actually solves quite some problems. Uh, on top of that, we also have some quite some hardware accelerations and also just newer ha hardware that can process sh this large amounts of data and actually can work with such complex uh, machine learning solutions like the, the deep learning models. Uh, all this together have enabled us to do newer things, one of them being digital twins. So for example, uh, when we talk about uh, machine learning and deep learning for digital twins, there have been recent papers making use of it. One of them, for example, is uh, where they were using chip transfer learning, actually, for fault uh, diagnosis. 
So they are the digital twin that they have trained and they've created a model uh, using the deep uh, neural network. It was a sparse autoencoder, if someone is interested, but there's also the reference of the papers in this slide, so you can go and check it out if, you, if you're interested. And afterwards, they use deep transfer learning in order to adjust the model to different situations, different environment, and different distribution of the data coming in. Because one of the limitations of any machine learning solution would be the generalization or the abstraction is quite hard. So you, what you end up having is usually is a model that works well with the data set that you have or data that you have gathered, but it doesn't work well in any other data sets. And there have been approaches like deep transfer learning in order to tackle this, the, the distribution of changes and different environments, basically, where an engine can run or where the model will be used. Uh, and if you look further, there has been even more more and more papers trying to make use of the machine learning or deep learning specifically in order to create digital twins to analyze complex systems. Um, why I was mentioning about my previous experience and why it was relevant, for example, um, you can think of also digital twin can be a digital twin of a certain ship, for example, as you can see in this image. What you can then do is that all right, so the ship is running. You can try to say, okay, what if what happens if we have this pressure goes up a little bit or this happens and such happens? What that allows you to do is that you can, before time, analyze some faulty behavior or behavior that can actually lead to a uh, faulty state or some anomalies or even ship, you know, the engine blowing up or not running anymore. So that's the idea of a digital twin. So we have a more safe environment and very rich environment where we can run our analysis, where we can do our experiments, and where we beforehand can uh, basically predict what might happen in the future. And also see the reaction of the system to certain uh, changes and pro uh, proposals. So what you can see is that um, a lot of the cases um, or more common cases of using the digital twins so far has been in industry, in industrial case, in more engineering settings. Well, there was, a, for example, the, the papers that are also shown are focused on uh, usually wind turbines or uh, ships, for example, or so on. What about healthcare? Because if you think about it, I mean, and this will be a very simplified view of things, to be honest. Um, so. Sorry for that, but you can see in a way the ship or engines or just large engine rooms consist of smaller systems that are each complex by itself already. We can understand the smaller system a bit better, but the connection between an intrinsic behavior or the correlation between the systems is a very hard to capture and very hard to manually let's say, capture or understand. Usually there are people who are very well trained on this. We call them engine experts usually. But then let's draw a parallel to healthcare. Can, can we draw a parallel to the healthcare? We talked about what enabled this, this whole uh, new field. We have talked about the high throughput data, so we talked about advancements in AI and so on. Well, high throughput data and high throughput sequencing is a thing in healthcare as well. So we, are, we, usually, we usually get qu quite some data, or we can generate quite some data regarding our patients, regarding uh, their genomic sequencing, for example. Okay, cool. What about uh, other parts? So advancements in AI, that works for all the uh, fields equally. As long as the data set is there, the model will do fine. Uh, but are the fields comparable? In a way, yes and no. Of course, humans and our bodies are way more complicated and we are not a simple mechanical systems. However, believe me, the large engines of the uh, ships or so, let's say, or the power plants are also very complicated. So we can draw a parallel in the day that if it can work in that case, it can probably bring some value in, in, in using it in healthcare as well. So it's an interesting proposition. Has anything been done in it? Yes, there have been some papers from recent years that have focused on things like uh, monitoring patients through VR, uh, the glasses, uh, remote surgery uh, ideas, uh, and all, it's mostly has been predictive health and well-being and also just health man management in elderly. So there have been some idea uh, of uh, using it. 
But is this all we can do? What what can what more can we do? What are the limiting factors? Let's say at in the current day. Uh, so what more we can do? There are some big open research questions uh, when it comes to using digital twins in healthcare. So one of one of them is uh, you, is creating this um, human digital twin. So basically creating a model and also eliminating the barrier of modeling the human humans as a digital twin. It's quite a far-fetched idea, understandably. Um, as, as far as my knowledge of the healthcare goes and medicine goes, we, we do not know our bodies fully as well. Like We know quite a lot of things about it, but we cannot predict very well reaction of the body at all times. It's, it's a quite an open question. So, of course, it's also an open question of how can we even create a digital twin for the humans then. So that's one big part. Another, uh, the second, um, well, second largest, I guess, open research question is around the fact of uh, doing, doing some checks, pre-checks, uh, remote pre-checks uh, before doing surgery with the patients, and that actually leads to a larger group of the uh, research question, which is about doing remote, um, let's say. Maintenance is not the right word, but just looking at your patients from remote and just checking how their digital, how their twin is doing, and then also checking how would their body can react. Again, quite a far-fetched idea, but this is where uh, science wants to go towards it. Try to do that. Like, maybe we can model parts of the human body, not the whole human body, the whole system, but smaller systems and so um, parts of it. So what? Bring, what, what are the challenges? Well, the interesting challenge, of course, which is not mentioned here, is the complexity of it all. It might, it will take us a while, while before we can get there. A bit more concrete from technical perspective, there's a challenge which comes to sanitization. There's no standard model or a single model that works for all cases when it comes to creating digital twins. So it creates a problem where if you have digital twins coming from different uh, laboratories, for example, or universities or companies or whatever, they will work differently. So it, there's no standardization there. Also, standardization comes when it comes to data formatting and sharing between the uh, parties. They might come in different uh, ways. Connectivity. Um, we are living in a modern world, of course, but not all the Internet of Things, the IoT devices, are compatible with digital twin solutions usually, or they cannot really communicate very well. This is a simpler of the, I guess, challenges that can be dealt with, but it's still a limitation at, uh, in the current day. So even if we had a digital twin solution, it wouldn't be easily migratable to existing devices. And the last but uh, not least of all, actually bigger challenges when it comes to healthcare applications is the privacy and sensitivity of the, of the data. In Europe, we have GDPR rules, for example, for the data governance. But also when we talk about patient data, they, they, have, to be, they have to be in some way anonymized or encrypted and then shared among the parties and the models, the digital tools that we have, have to be able to deal with this in some standard way. So... These are the main challenges and limitations that I see in the field and that have also been reported as being the main ones in uh, several review papers. Uh, closing thoughts. It's an exciting research field. I have enjoyed being and uh, working in this field. I wasn't more on the industrial side of the digital twins rather than healthcare. My healthcare background, healthcare research background is quite different. Um, in the industrial setting, we have seen benefits, but those systems are a bit more simpler. So when it comes to more complex systems like in healthcare, there's still quite some barriers to pass, but it still stays and remains being a very promising uh, field. And I hope I, I managed to get you uh, excited and to look into digital twins and think about it. Uh, and I would like to thank you for your attention and thank you for once again for yeah, inviting me and letting me be part of this lecture. Thank you. <laughs>